We're here at Defence Vehicle Dynamics 2018 and I'm joined by Keith Mallon, who's Land Autonomy Manager for Kinetic. Keith, can you explain to me about the Last Mile Resupply programme? Sure. So Autonomous Last Mile Resupply is a programme that's been run by DSTL and Army over the last year or so. Uh, we've just been down selected um, as one of the successful bidders for Phase 2 and in it we are trying to provide an end-to-end -end solution to the Autonomous Last Mile Resupply Challenge. In effect, how the system works, it's like a almost like an e-commerce platform that allows troops on the front line to be resupplied. So what we would do is we would provide them with a basic software interface, a bit like a, a smartphone app. And whereas the previous situation, a soldier would have to run around, tot up all those ammunition and resupply totals, get on the net, ask for a resupply, we'll be able to automate a huge amount of that functionality. So what we do is we have an app interface and a logistic planning system that's provided by the University of Hull. That knows where the material is in the battle space and where it needs to be distributed to. What then happens is that there's a kinetic provided piece of tactical planning software. That will be able to take in a huge amount of dynamic planning factors and it will be able to provide to the operator a very simple mission profile for either an air or a land platform. When we task a land platform, we use a Titan. We have one here on display at DVD this week, also now equipped with this load handling system. There are two uh, organisations helping us with the autonomy on that platform. One is the UK uh, driverless car industry market leader, which is Oxbotica, a spin-off from Oxford University with their world-class IP that can help the vehicle navigate in GPS-denied environments, which is a really key user requirement. The other one is a, is a highly innovative system coming in from Aberystwyth at the University that searches for free space and allows the vehicle to navigate safely through that. We also then have the uh, hoverbike platforms in three different sizes uh, coming in from Malloy Aeronautics. They're a UK SME with a really exciting platform. And on that we put uh, Rogue Research, our partners, they put in their uh, autonomy stack that gives us a range of really advanced autonomous behaviours, including auto land and auto rendezvous. It's really quite exciting. It removes that operator burden to a huge extent. The, the comms challenge in all of this is quite great. And what we are then able to do is work with our partners IQHQ and Morven, who've been developing some very exciting data link technology on behalf of DSTL, and we'll be able to integrate that for a final demo when it happens next year. In the interim, what we will do is we'll go to Salisbury Plain as part of the Army Warfighting Experiment, where the Titan will be present, along with all of the other partners, um, as part of Autonomous Last Mile Resupply, where then we'll also have other concept systems on display as well, most notably Titan Sentry, which is a, uh, a reconnaissance and iStar platform. So could you explain to me about the interoperability between the systems? So all of the interoperability is enabled by completely open architectures. Um, the kinetic mission planning system, which is, um, which is central to the management of the air and the land platform missions, and communicating with that higher level logistic planning system provided by Hull. Um, that's a very open architecture system. We're able to plug in a variety of software packages, autonomy stacks, uh, and different vehicles, and all the time it's, it's very modular, which I think is one of the things that's really excited the customer, is the fact that it's, it's in, built in with, with upgrade potential. You know, there's nothing closed in what we're doing. We're able to work with a whole variety of, of, of partners uh, and of other SMEs and academics who are doing innovative work in this space, and it means that we can integrate their innovation very rapidly in a very cost-effective way, showing measurable improvement all the time. So AWE18, I believe yeah. that's kicking off in December. It is indeed, yeah. And it's going to be a busy um, month. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a yeah. busy month. <laughs> and can you describe to me perhaps some of the tests or the trials um, that this equipment will have to undertake? Yeah. So there are, there are kind of two serials that we'll run through as part of Army Warfighter's experiment. The first is the, the last mile piece, which is, which is uh, running as a, a discrete subset of AWE. Um, and in that we will run the, uh, an initial integration of the, all the component parts of our last mile system, all the software and all the vehicles, um, and, and that's early stage. So that will allow us to kind of de-risk um, some of the work, make sure that our operational concepts are being tested uh, and give us a chance for some early end user feedback. Um, this is this is really disruptive stuff. This is this is not business as usual for the military, and it's also taking a lot of private uh, funding investment as well in order to mature the technology in addition to the customer funding. So we need to test and make sure that we're really getting these concepts right. Um, the value proposition that we have behind all this is that we can reduce the tempo, uh, reduce the risk of operations, increase the tempo, and reduce the cognitive burden. Now we have a view on how that can be achieved. 
but what we need to do is make sure that that matches how we think our customers want to work as well. The flip, the other side of AWE will be the, um, the various vignettes that have been constructed by the, the trials and development units within the British Army. What we will do there is we will take that uh, Titan Sentry system, which will have a command station integrated um, into uh, an existing infantry fighting vehicle, and we will then be able to go and task the platform to occupy a remote space. Uh, we can reduce that risk by putting it into a, an environment where manned platforms may not wish to occupy. It can provide overwatch, it can track targets, and then using a comms network, we will then be able to redistribute that information throughout the battle space, uh, passing off targets. And we're doing that in partnership as well. So we have a, a Kelvin use mounted um, battlefield radar and pantalips and camera system and they were also working with another provider um, who will be able to provide us with some artificial intelligence processing of all of that data. There's a, when we talk about reducing that cognitive burden, we have to be very mindful that gathering all that data is fine, but it's not yet information, let alone intelligence. You have to process it, you've got to do it at source as best you can, because if you're moving huge amounts of data throughout the battle space, you're just going to clutter up all that very limited bandwidth, uh, so we have to be very mindful of. You can't jam up those comms pipes and you can't overload that user, and it's something that we're working very hard on.